Hey everyone, Nick Flaherty here for the Colorist Jam. We have line art this month from Brent Schoonover. I got to sit down with him, talk a little comics. Here's a clip. What's the first comic book you remember reading and loving? Oh, this is a great question because it actually ties into um, something that's happening the next week for me. When I was a kid, my parents, probably around kindergarten or first grade, took me to South Dakota to Mount Rushmore. And uh, we drove from Illinois to Mount Rushmore. And there's a place called Wall Drug that is uh, well known in like the Midwest as this weird hokey. There's billboards all throughout every state, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin for Wall Drug. And it just, it's like, oh, this must be this impressive place to go see. And then you get there and it's just a giant hokey strip mall with like <laughs> weird stuff. And it's kind of a like a letdown, I think, when you're a kid, you're like, this place must be amazing. And it's <laughs> not. But they had comic books on a rack there and we had been driving for quite a while. And obviously we we're there and we we're driving all the way back to Illinois. And my dad just let me get like a handful of comics. And the two that I remember um, was West Coast Avengers issue 37 had this awesome Doctor Doom cover and then uh, Incredible Hulk like 348 and it was Hulk when he was Mr. Fix-It in his like yeah. he was gray but he was also like the Vegas bouncer guy yeah uh, man smacking uh, Spider-Man off a building and I was like oh <laughs> and uh, I, that issue cemented my love like for comic books, you know, right there was those issues. What's cool is, is uh, this coming week, uh, my daughters have their spring break and Millie's like my age uh, when I was a kid and we're just gonna drive and go check out Mount Rushmore. Uh, we found like a trip we could yeah. do that feels sort of socially distant. And uh, so we're gonna go check it out and we're gonna go to Wall Drug and I'm gonna take my comic books that I bought at Wall Drug. Well, <laughs> and I'm totally gonna take a picture with them. Uh, <laughs> Like, that's great they're freaking like 35 years old <laughs> <laughs> what's your biggest artistic victory Ooh, god oh man i should think about that because i had a bad drawing day today um <laughs> that happens uh, to everyone I, I honestly for me i think at this point i think it's when i find i draw something good that i hate drawing what do you hate drawing cars have never been my favorite thing like though i feel like i've got a way to, to draw them now and i feel yeah. like i always have to draw like every detail on them and i've kind of like overcome that um i'll tell you what the most satisfying thing is easily the folds on clothing like when yeah. you really because it's a thing that you kind of like develop it's kind of like ears like you kind of have your own ears and then like you sometimes you have to look and be like I'm really getting lazy on those earlobes. You know, kind of like redo them. Folds and clothing is another thing. Like I love, I kind of definitely came from the Darwin Cook school of like seeing his stuff. And it was like, well, you can do these sort of zigzaggy on the shoulders. Sure, yeah. And you have like, kind of always drew, I love Darwin, but he definitely draws because he has like that nostalgia, like pleated pants on everybody. And so yeah. it's a, uh, and you could kind of get caught up in that and so i definitely took from that and maybe some of like the bruce timmy's timmy that uh, bruce tim stuff <laughs> I, you just have to kind of catch that every now and then be like you, you're kind of getting a little lazy there there's sure. nothing more satisfying when you like nail the folding on clothing to me i don't know why it's just one of those things like i got that so <laughs> it's really dumb but that's my thing so if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice for comics, what would it be? I've had a couple of pieces of advice that really stuck. And one of them was uh, Steve Lieber came to uh, my comic or my college when I was kind of went to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And he gave this awesome critique. He like drew over all my pages and uh, it was a Batman page that we were doing samples of. And, uh, he kind of, you know, he was really good. He built me up, but he also told me how much work I had to do to get there. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, I just, I hope one of these days I'm going to be able to do Batman or something like that too. And he was like, yeah. you know what, man, don't sweat it. He had just done Whiteout actually, which is oh, a great book. Yeah. Awesome book. I just reread those this winter. 
And he just kind of said offhandedly, he's like, you're never going to have more fun drawing comic books than when you draw your own thing. He's like, you can always, hmm. he's like, you can always open a sketchbook and the feeling of if you draw Batman in there is the same as if you are drawing it for DC. And it took a long time to get to that, like, understanding of, like, it's true. Like, I can stop right now and draw Batman and it would be awesome. And I have no, I can draw 1930s Batman or I could draw current Tom King looking Batman. And it just, it's, it's for fun. And I think that's the one thing I kind of like is to not put so much pressure on you. Cause I've had awesome opportunities and stuff like that, that I've really loved, but like, it's still a job. And like, sometimes some of these jobs sort of come with an asterisk to them. It's like, here's a great opportunity, but you only got three weeks to do it. And sure. you're not going to get your best work done in that three weeks. You might have a couple pages you like, but really it's it's an economic thing at that point that you just have to kind of get it done. Yeah. And I kind of felt like when I was really, really busy at Marvel and DC and stuff like that, that there was just some tight deadlines and having two kids. Like I was done and I always just feel like, huh, like I feel like I should be yeah, happier. Yeah. And it wasn't the project was bad or anything. It's just like life. And I just think putting that much pressure on it to be this thing that as you kind of grow up and you realize it's all a gig, like it's it, sure. I think it kind of evens out. So I think the long winded answer, that would be my thing is just to like enjoy doing your own thing just as much as you do these characters that you dreamed about drawing. Is there anything that a comic colorist can do that grabs your attention or anything that you see a comic colorist does and you're like, that guy knows what he's doing. That girl knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, to me, it's it's like, um, there's just like a confidence in knowing how they to handle certain environments. Like, um, this is how, you know, it's outside, it's winter. Um, you're just not picking those typical colors, you know, like something. Like, it's almost like a, a language, you know, like it's like, oh, you're developing your own language. Like You've developed your own language now. And like, I remember seeing it in Holly Commandos when we worked together. I remember that you got, we had a cool double page spread of like, there was a ship in the Holly Commandos were being lowered. There was like a, they were about ready to parachute down. Yeah. I remember the first time I'd seen that page that you had sent me, you had like this purple background sky. It was like, awesome and i was like nick is getting it like this like he didn't even have to i didn't have to say anything i didn't know no any notes it was like in my head what you gave me and it's like i think it's just sort of like the way artists do it too it's like they're developing their own language and it's like just i see so many today especially i hate to say it like in yeah, i think we're getting so many new colorists getting opportunities because there's so many publishers now sure that, like see it and it's like I think that it's like, oh, we're using these blues because it's cold outside or anything like I always kind of look at like the way different environments like people use skin tones and like the light that reflects it. And I think you and I just actually had a conversation on the phone of like your light sources. Like, I think that's the yeah. key is like the secret gem of like, oh, man, they like know where the light source is. And I don't know. So I kind of look at that like it's like your, your confidence in like developing your own palettes and knowing your light sources, like, to me, it's great. And it doesn't have to be overly rendered. To me, I, 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 I kind of like, as I've gotten older, I've really kind of more enjoyed, like, this more streamlined style that it, I remember it took me a while to get into, but, like, anymore, I'm, I'm digging more colorists that do that and can find a way to get more out of less, which is kind of, like, the way I kind of like my, my line art, you know? It's like, how do you get more out of less? So... Again, a long-winded answer that I don't know <laughs> if I, uh, I pr properly answered. But, I uh, mentioned these were supposed to be punchy for social media, right? I think so, but I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, what, what one more? One more. Another person in <laughs> <laughs> nine months? No. Yeah.